Okay, so now we're going to talk about elementary probability theory. So we'll start by some definitions. Uh, so basic definitions that we need for probability theory. It's the axioms of probability theory. Then we'll continue with uh, some results that can be deduced from these uh, definitions. And finally, we will finish by talking about conditional and joint probability. So first definition that we need is uh, an outcome. And uh, we have a, something we call a sample space, which is all possible outcomes. And then each element in the sample space is called an outcome. And an event is simply a set of outcomes from this sample space. So this doesn't make much sense on its own, but we will see some examples on how this is used. So uh, let our sample space be the uh, role of a die, which means our sample space, each outcome is the, what the die will show. So in this case, we have a six-sided die, which is fairly standard. So one, two, three, four, five, or six uh, is the possible outcome. That is that that uh, face comes out uh, upwards, facing up uh, after the roll. So the sample space is basically these outcomes. And then the set of uh, possible events is any combination of these. So an event is simply that, uh, that uh, for instance, uh, number one came up. Uh, it could also be that either one or two came up. So that's still an event. Uh, so we have to make, uh, remember to make a difference between an event and an outcome. Uh, and uh, in this definition, both the empty set, that is no outcome, and uh, the full set uh, itself with all faces up, both of them are actually events. Uh, so an event simply means that one of its outcomes uh, happen. And uh, for instance, if you want to express the event, the die roll results in an even number, that event is that either two, four, or six uh, come, uh, comes out facing upwards after the roll of the die. So that's an event. So an event can consist of several outcomes. Now, um, to the core of uh, probability theory is probably the probability measure because that's how we how we measure probabilities. So we, we let omega here be our sample space, same as before. And then a probability measure is simply a function uh, from all possible combinations, all possible subsets uh, of uh, omega to the interval zero and to one and it's inclusive. So it in includes the zero and it includes the one, uh, anything in there. And it's a, it's a real number, of course. And this function must also have the properties that the probability of the empty set, as we can see here, is equal to zero. And the probability of the entire uh, set of outputs is one which means that uh, the probability that one of the outcomes happen is of course uh, one because nothing else can happen. So it's uh, the probability that one of the outcomes happen is, is guaranteed. That's basically what it says. And the second property is that if A is uh, an event and B is also an event, and uh, A and B uh, don't share any, any joint outcomes, then the probability of A or B happening is the probability of A happening plus the probability of B happening. 
Now, these are the basic axioms that we have for a probability measure, and we can we will see that we can can do quite a lot uh, with only these uh, this uh, uh, these properties, these axioms. Uh, so, as an exercise, I want you to to reflect on. Uh, this definition. So this definition is well defined, but ask yourselves why. For instance, how do we know that the probability of A plus probability of B is uh, never exceeds one? Um, because if uh, the probability of A is 0 0.9 and probability of B is 0 0.9, then obviously summing them up would be more than one. So think about that for a moment, pause the video and think about that for a moment and uh, convince yourself why that is the case. Now, let's see an example using this uh, probability measure then. So let uh, our uh, uh, probability space uh, be omega d as before. Uh, and uh, let it be the, the die rule. And now how should we define this probability function uh, for this example? Well, uh, we're all used to uh, these dies being uh, perfect, which means it should be equal probability for each side to come out facing up. So what we have is the probability of the event containing only one outcome should be the same uh, for all the outcomes. Uh, so uh, since we have six sides, it should be one sixth for each side. Now, uh, we have another uh, exercise that I want you to think about, and that's the probability of a die showing uh, an even number after a roll is three sixths. And uh, I want you to uh, think about why is that the case. Take some time to think about that. Now, uh, the next thing we want to talk about is the probability space. And uh, omega is a sample space and uh, PR is a probability measure on the sample space. Then we call these uh, two taken together, so omega and this probability function, as a probability space. So that's the, that's the whole thing. Now, uh, we are going to talk about some results that we can, can get from uh, this little theory that we have introduced so far. So, the first one, the first theorem that we are going to look at is the probability for an event and its complement. So let A be uh, an event and uh, let C be the complement. Uh, and by complement, we simply mean uh, the event consisting of the entire sample space minus A. So uh, if we take A and C together, uh, they will form uh, omega. And if uh, A and C has this relation, then for the probability uh, measure that we have, we can compute C as one minus the probability of A. Now, why is that? Well, our definition before uh, said that the probability of the entire sample space is equal to one. So that was part of the definition. And since uh, A and C taken together is uh, the, entire, uh, the entire sample space, then A and C, and the probability of A and C must be, uh, be one. Now, we also said in the definition that if we have uh, two uh, events, A and B, then 
which has nothing uh, in common, then the probability of A uh, and B taken together is the probability of A plus the probability of B. This means that the probability of A and C is also uh, the probability of A plus the probability of C because they have nothing in common. Uh, the A uh, C here is exactly omega minus A, so they have nothing in common. And as such, we can form this equation. So since uh, the probability of A plus the probability of C is equal to one, then the probability of C must be equals to one minus the probability of A. Now let's consider another example. Rolling an even number uh, had the probability of uh, three over six. Now applying this theorem, uh, we have that rolling an odd number is one minus three over six. Now, I want you to think about the following exercise. So give two ways to compute the probability of rolling a six. Think about that for a while. Now, uh, another thing uh, that we want to talk about, we want to make another definition, and that's uh, independent events. So we have this probability space, omega and PR, and we have this event A and event B, and we say that these are independent if the probability of A and B happening is the probability of A times the probability of B. Yeah, now that's a new definition. So say that we roll one die, then our sample space was the outcomes of the die, and uh, the event is uh, roll of one, which is A is uh, equal to, to this outcome, just a one, and roll of six is uh, the outcome of uh, only a six facing, of course. Now, clearly we cannot get uh, one and six at the same time, uh, which means that the probability of uh, getting one and a six at the same time is uh, zero, since uh, yeah, we cannot get both at the same time. And uh, yeah, well, the probability of A and probability of B uh, multiplied uh, together is not zero, so A and B are not independent events. However, we can get either uh, a one or a six, which was what we uh, looked at before too. Uh, so A uh, or B, so either a one or a six, which is the probability of getting a one plus probability of getting a six. So that's uh, two over six as expected. So we can say that A and B are uh, at least not independent. Now let's say that we roll two dice and uh, we uh, have another uh, sample space now. So the, since we roll two dice, each uh, outcome is uh, one outcome for the first and one outcome for the second. So the first one uh, can be one and the second one can be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we go through all of them so that we have every combination of uh, yeah, these two, two dice as an outcome. So now we want to roll a one, which is uh, the outcome, uh, which, which is the event A here. Uh, and rolling a one, then either the first die should come out as one, and we don't care about the second, which is the case here. So the first one is uh, one, and the second can be one, two, three, four, five, six. 
or in the first one, uh, the, the second one must be one and the first one, we don't care what the outcome is, which is what we do here. We fix uh, the second one. And uh, so then the first one can be two, three, four, five, six. And uh, note that we have one, one here, so we don't need to uh, add that one again. And we can do the same thing for uh, rolling a six. So now uh, we have uh, the first one fixed at six, and then we have the second one fixed at six. So those are the possible outcomes. So now, the, what is the, if we, we want to roll a one and a six, now we have uh, the probability uh, we have the probability of rolling one and a six is, well, basically the probability of these two coming out, which is two over 36, because uh, we have 36 uh, sample space is uh, 36 in total. And there are two possibilities uh, that we can get them out. And that's not, uh, one time uh, one over six times one over six either so these two uh, are not independent either now uh, roll a one or a six uh, with two chances uh, that's the probability of a uh, or b uh, happening so this is something we we can express here now, uh, let's say that we uh, roll uh, two dice, same again. So first roll is uh, uh, fixed at one, so we want to roll a one, and second roll is a six. So note the emphasis here that we want to roll first a one, and then we want to roll second a six. So the order is important here, note that. Now, in this case, the only outcome that is acceptable to us is uh, this outcome with a one at the first position and a six at the second position. And this is one over 36, which is uh, a sixth times a sixth. So A and B here are actually independent uh, from each other. Uh, and to express either roll a one first or a six on the second, uh, then we can express that as uh, uh, the probability of A or B here. Now the last part that we want to talk about is conditional and joint probabilities. Uh, so Conditional probability, uh, conditioned pro, uh, probability, that's basically when we, uh, we, have, uh, we have, we are interested in computing the probability of an outcome and we know, uh, or an event, and we know that another event has uh, already happened. So the definition we do here, uh, we'll start with the definition and then an example. So the definition we do here is we have A and B, which are events in some probability space, uh, omega and PR, and then the probability of B, given that A has already happened, is defined as follows. So we write, write it like this. So the probability of B, given that A has already happened, uh, that's defined as the probability of B and A both happening. So both uh, need to occur, divided by the probability of A actually happening. So let's see uh, something, uh, an interesting example to illustrate uh, this. So we have the probability, sp probability space of rolling a die again, same as before. And now we have an event E for uh, the even side uh, showing up. Now we let, uh, the event A B uh, that two is facing up and we let the event B be that three is facing up. Then 
what is the probability that the die shows uh, a two if we have learned that the die showed an even event? Well, if we put it in uh, into this formula that we had, we see that uh, if we take the probability of this happening divided by the probability of the event E happening, we get a third because the top one here is uh, one sixth and uh, the bottom one here is uh, uh, one half uh, because it's uh, half of the outcomes and it was uh, an even possibility. And that makes a third. The probability for B occurring, uh, on the other hand, well, the probability of a third uh, of uh, three facing up when we know it's an even number, well, we know that uh, the probability of uh, three happening when we know this. So the intersection between this and this is the empty empty set. So the probability of the empty set we defined as zero. And it doesn't matter what this one is, uh, the result will be zero. So uh, we know that we cannot have uh, three showing up when we have uh, when we have had uh, an even number showing. Now the next thing we want to talk about is uh, joint probability. So in this case we have. Uh, two events, A, B, which are events in a probability space, omega PR, and then the probability of A and B happening can then be defined as the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Now using conditional uh, probability, we can show this uh, new result. I want you to think about how we can do that. So take some time to do that. So the proof of how we do that is actually, uh, we have the definition of condition probability, which was the probability of B given A is the probability of A and B happening divided by the probability of A. And if we actually just rewrite this, uh, if we multiply both sides by uh, the probability of A, then we get uh, PB given A here, the probability of B given A, times the probability of A, and left on the other side, we get the probability of A and B. So it was as simple as that. So the last thing that we are going to talk about is Bayes' theorem. So let A and B be events in the probability space omega and PR, same as before, then the probability of A given B is the probability of B given A multiplied by the probability of A divided by the probability of B. Now, um, we will see why this is the case. So we have that probability of a given B was according to our definition before, the probability of A and B happening divided by the probability of B. Note here that we have switched A and B compared to how we used to write it before. Yeah. And the probability of B given A, that was how we phrased it before, that's uh, the probability of A and B happening divided by the probability of A. Now, if this is the case, then the probability of A and B happening, it can be expressed as the probability of A given B multiplied by the probability of B, which, uh, and uh, it can on the other hand be written as the probability of B given A multiplied by the probability of A. And if we take this together, it means that the probability of A given B can be written as the probability of B give, uh, given A multiplied by the probability of A divided by the probability of B. Yeah, so basically what we do uh, to get this is that, yeah, we take these two uh, equations 
and we simply divide both sides with the probability of B. So then we get the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of B given A times multiplied by probability of A divided by the probability of B. Simple as that. Now, why is Bayes' theorem actually interesting then? Yeah, you can do a lot of stuff with Bayes' theorem. So it's, uh, it's at the foundations for uh, learning by inference uh, in a lot of cases. But we will look at another example uh, where it's actually useful. So we have an intrusion detection system. And uh, our intrusion detection system is very good. It detects malicious traffic with 99% certainty. So these are the true positives. And it discards benign traffic with 99% certainty, true negatives. So this sounds really, really good. Uh, very few errors um, by the sound of it. Um, so it should discard benign traffic because uh, if the traffic is benign, then it's not malicious. So it should discard it. And if it is malicious traffic, then it should uh, should note that, okay, this is malicious traffic. Uh, so that's what these two are saying. So now let's assume that half a percent of the traffic yeah, that we receive is uh, malicious traffic. That is uh, attempts to, uh, of attack. Now we have an event M uh, which is malicious traffic and uh, the event B is benign traffic. And uh, we let the event uh, plus means that the, our intrusion detection system declared it malicious and uh, minus if it declared it benign. Now, what do we get? Uh, what can we get from, from this? Now, if we use Bayes' theorem, what we are interested in learning here is that the probability of this intrusion detection system saying that something is malicious, uh, given uh, we, what we want to have from our intrusion detection system is the probability that the traffic is actually malicious, given that the intrusion detection system said that it is malicious. Okay, so if we put this into the, into, uh, the base theorem formula, uh, we will see here that this is equal to the probability of the traffic actually being uh, malicious, that the uh, IDS uh, determines that it is malicious, provided that the traffic is actually malicious. Uh, multiplied by the probability of uh, malicious traffic and divided by the probability of the uh, IDS outputting uh, that it's malicious traffic. Now, what we said in our definition is that provided with the malicious traffic, uh, our IDS will output uh, with some accuracy. So this first term here is the 99% accuracy that we were talking about. And this means that the, and then the probability of malicious traffic here on uh, was what we said, uh, that was our assumption that it's 0.5%. Uh, so this is 0.5%. Okay. So left is this probability of our um, IDS outputting, uh, this is malicious traffic. But let's play with uh, what we have here. Um, so we, we keep these uh, and then we try to re rewrite this, uh, the probability of our system outputting, this is malicious traffic. So this is actually uh, this is actually uh, the case when um, we have two two possibilities uh, to to get here. So the first one is 
that we uh, uh, that the traffic is actually malicious and it outputs uh, this. And the other case is that it's benign traffic, but it still outputs that it is malicious. So these two taken together is the probability of our system outputting this is malicious traffic. Now, uh, if we, we keep, uh, keep these numbers intact, and now we simply plug in what we'd said before. So this one we knew it was 99%, and this one we knew it was 0.5%. And this one we also knew uh, from, uh, from our uh, definition. So it was 99% uh, uh, accurate when it said that this is uh, benign traffic, which means it, uh, it mislabels uh, 1%, which is what we get here. And then the probability of uh, it being benign uh, traffic well, that's of course one minus the probability of uh, uh, malicious traffic. So it's uh, it's 99.5% uh, accuracy. So we, we simply plug in uh, these numbers again. So we put in the 99.5% here. And if we simply uh, calculate what this yields, it's, it yields uh, 0 0.33. Uh, this means that it's actually only one third of uh, the times that our uh, intrusion detection system says anything, it's only one, uh, one third of the times that it's actually correct. So whenever it says, oh, we are under attack, uh, it's only one third of the times it says that, that it's actually correct, which is not particularly good because then you will have most of the times it gives you an alarm, it will be a false alarm. So 70, uh, over 75% of the times uh, when, you, when you use uh, this system, over 75% of the alarms will be false alarms. Uh, so that's not good. Uh, so what would you say is a good enough probability for, uh, uh, for this? So given that the uh, intrusion detex detection system says that uh, it has um, it has detected uh, malicious traffic. Uh, what should the probability be that uh, it actually is malicious traffic? And uh, how can we achieve that? So think about that for a while. And that was the end of uh, what we were going to talk about today. <laughs>